This week on Business Explored, we'll take a look at eBay, one of the industry's founding fathers. eBay was founded in 1995 by a 28-year-old Iranian-American who was born in France. His name was Pierre Omidyar, and he has your usual tech pioneer background. He graduated Tufts University in 1988 with a degree in computer science and was soon thereafter hired as a developer by an Apple subsidiary. In 1991, he co-founded Inc. Development, an early e-commerce company. While working there, Pierre came up with a lot of ideas about how a modern online marketplace could work, but his other partners would never seem to agree with him. To make his dream a reality, Pierre left Inc. Development in 1994, and he got a job as a developer at General Magic to pay the bills while he was developing his idea. One year later in 1995, Pierre had finally finished writing the code to his platform, and he released it on September 3rd under the name of Auction Web, hosted on eBay.com, which was Pierre's personal domain. By February 1996, the website was generating so much traffic that Pierre had to upgrade his personal internet connection to a business one. This sudden jump in costs drove him to start charging commissions on every auction. These fees remain the company's main monetization model to this day. In June 1996, Pierre quit his job at General Magic and he hired a programmer friend of his to expand the platform's functionality. The site began to grow rapidly and by the end of the year, over 250,000 auctions were being hosted on Auction Web. Just six months later in June 1997, that number had increased to over 800,000. That same month, he renamed the site eBay and he started sharing his business plan to venture capitalists around Silicon Valley. One particular firm called Benchmark Capital gave Pierre $4.5 million in exchange for a 22% stake in the company. Benchmark also promised to find a suitable CEO to help run the company. And in March 1998, they made good on their promise by hiring Margaret Whitman, a former Hasbro executive. She was a pretty big name in the business world, having also served as an executive at Disney, DreamWorks, and Procter & Gamble. She turned the ragtag eBay into a structured corporation pretty fast, so much so that in September 1998, eBay went public under her guidance with a listing on the Nasdaq for $18 per share. Margaret's decision was justified because on its very first day of trading, the stock price went all the way up to $53. Less than four months later, eBay shares were trading at $300 a piece and Pierre had become an instant billionaire. The company at the time had barely 30 employees, half a million registered users, and annual revenue of $5 million. Although originally eBay was mostly a marketplace for collectible items, it rapidly expanded its assortment until it covered pretty much every legal item that you could sell. eBay began acquiring other tech companies. It has made over 50 acquisitions in its short lifespan, the most notable ones being PayPal in 2002 and Skype in 2005. In 2008, Margaret resigned to run for governor of California, a race she eventually lost, and the mantle of CEO was passed down to John Donahoe. By that point, eBay was a massive company with over 15,000 employees and annual revenues of nearly $8 billion. Despite its size though, eBay was already on the decline. Amazon was making more than twice as much money, and eBay's performance had been lackluster for three years in a row. Dono tried to focus on eBay's core e-commerce business by getting rid of most of the company's stake in Skype in 2009. They got less than $3 billion for it, but just two years later Microsoft bought it for the price tag of $8.5 billion. It was pretty clear that Donahoe wasn't doing a good job. In the early January of 2014, he got in trouble with Carl Icahn. Now, if you've never heard of Carl Icahn, well, you should have. He's a very successful contrarian investor and one of the most famous corporate raiders in history. His trademark strategy is to acquire a large stake in a struggling public company and then to force its management to enact radical changes. He argued that eBay's declining e-commerce business was dragging down the otherwise successful PayPal, which, if you remember, they acquired in 2002. Carl Icahn wanted the two companies to split. John Donahoe was, of course, totally opposed to the idea, and a very heated public relations battle ensued. Eventually, Carl Icahn succeeded, and on July 18, 2015, PayPal was spun off into a separate company. 
Ikan immediately converted his 46 million eBay shares into shares of PayPal, and Joe Donahoe promptly resigned in defeat. Ever since the split, eBay has been struggling to find its place in the world. With Amazon stronger than ever, eBay's attempts at pushing their own version of a global online marketplace have been shaky at best. PayPal, in comparison, have been doing great, and in just one year they've outperformed eBay by 13% eBay is stuck in the difficult position of slowly becoming the MySpace of e-commerce, and the bad news is that there probably isn't an easy way to fix this. The e-commerce industry in general is a prime example of demand-side economics of scale. Each new user of a given platform increases that platform's value to future users. And if you compare the growth of Amazon's user base to that of eBay, you'll quickly see where things are going. eBay is definitely in a tough spot and they will need to come up with something truly innovative if they want to stay around for long. I hope you enjoyed the story of eBay. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe and check out other Business Explored videos. Please also check out the links in the description.